Hey guys and welcome to Hada Gastro. In today's presentation, we will be talking about bilirubin and jaundice. So let's get started. What is bilirubin? Bilirubin is the product formed by the breakdown of red blood cells in the body. Red blood cells are continuously undergoing hemolysis or a breaking down process because their average lifespan is about 120 days. As the red blood cells disintegrate, the hemoglobin is degraded or broken down into globin, which is the protein part, iron, which is conserved for later use, and heme. So as you can see here, this is our red blood cell and it undergoes hemolysis or a breaking down process. And when it's broken down, we are left with all the components that make it up. So we have the globin part, which is basically the protein part. We have the iron, which is saved to be reused. And then we have the heme part, which is the last part that we're left with. The heme initially breaks apart into biliverdine, a green pigment, which is rapidly reduced to bilirubin, an orange yellow pigment. So I want you guys to please follow in the diagram on the right. We have those red blood cells which were broken down and the hemoglobin was broken down further. So from the heme, we went to biliverdine, and now we are at bilirubin, which is an orange-yellow pigment. So this is the point here at which we're at, and this bilirubin is the unconjugated or the indirect bilirubin. The bilirubin is then transported into the liver, where it reacts with a solubilizing sugar called glucuronic acid. Here in the liver, the unconjugated or indirect bilirubin is converted to a more soluble form of bilirubin which is called the conjugated or direct bilirubin. So I'm just going to pause there and explain further on the diagram. So we have this indirect or this unconjugated bilirubin which is taken up by the liver and in the liver it undergoes a conjugation process so that it becomes more soluble so that the body can excrete it easier because Bilirubin in this indirect form before it enters the liver is the insoluble form and the body will not be able to dispose of it if it's in that unconjugated form. So it has to go to the liver to be conjugated so that it becomes soluble and it will be more easier for it to be disposed of. So in the liver, the unconjugated or indirect bilirubin is converted to a more soluble form of bilirubin which is the conjugated or direct bilirubin. This direct bilirubin is excreted into the bile, which goes through the gallbladder into the intestines where the bilirubin is changed into a variety of pigments. The most important ones are stercobilin, which is excreted into the feces, and urobilinogen, which is excreted as a normal component of the urine. So to explain further on the diagram, we have the conjugated or direct form now of bilirubin after the liver has worked its magic and that enters the bile system. So it enters the gallbladder and is secreted into the intestine. And when it's secreted into the intestine, part of it is reabsorbed from the intestine and is excreted to the kidney. And that is the urobilinogen that is excreted by the kidney. And the rest of it undergoes the normal digestion process and ends up in the small and large colon. And finally is excreted by the fecal matter as stercobilin. So this whole process explains the heme catabolism or the breaking down of the red blood cells and excretion of the waste products. So what is jaundice? Jaundice is the result of the accumulation of bilirubin in the blood. It is also called hyperbilirubinemia. So a lot hyper means high bilirubin refers to the amount of bilirubin and this can be direct or indirect forms of bilirubin and emia comes from the word blood so hyperbilirubinemia which means a high amount of bilirubin in the blood and jaundice clinically manifests as the yellowing of the skin and the mucosa in the body as well as itching or the medical term of course pruritus so you can see in the picture down below, the patient will present with this yellowing of the mucosa and usually the sclera turns yellow very quickly 
as well as the skin so all the skin will be turned yellow and they also have this tendency of itching a lot because of that bilirubin deposits in the skin it's going to cause them to be very itchy so what are the signs and symptoms of jaundice so jaundice as i said earlier is that hyperbilirubinemia so high levels of bilirubin in the blood we can have pale colored stools we can have dark colored urine we can have itchy skin, we can have nausea and vomiting, we can have rectal bleeding, we can have diarrhea, fever and chills, weakness, weight loss, a loss of appetite, confusion, abdominal pain, headache, a swelling of the legs, and a swelling and the distension of the abdomen due to the accumulation of fluid which is called ascites so you can see here this dark colored urine is actually called bilirubinuria and that is because we have this excess amount of bilirubin in the urine and you can see the normal urine on the right as a reference and below we have a patient with ascites and he has accumulation of fluid in the abdomen so now that we know what jaundice is and we know what bilirubin is, let's talk about the types of bilirubin and how they're related to jaundice. So there are two types of bilirubin in the blood, as we mentioned earlier. The unconjugated or indirect bilirubin is insoluble in water and this is the bilirubin before it reaches the liver. And then we have the conjugated or the direct bilirubin and this is the bilirubin that has been converted to a soluble bilirubin in the liver. It then goes into the bile to be stored in the gallbladder or sent to the intestines. And something to note is that the routine blood tests for total bilirubin measure both the unconjugated and conjugated bilirubin as well as the total bilirubin. So this little table on the right side of the screen is a very, very important table. And I want you guys to note this table and remember it because it will help you a lot in differentiating the cause of the jaundice in the patient. So again, before the liver or the prehepatic cause of jaundice will be caused by high levels of unconjugated bilirubin. So that's a problem that occurs before the liver. A hepatic cause for jaundice will be due to a primary liver disease. And when we have a primary liver disease, we will have increased in unconjugated and conjugated forms of bilirubin that we will be able to pick up on our blood test and in post hepatic jaundice we will have increases only in the amount of unconjugated bilirubin so i hope that's clear now so what are the normal values for the indirect or unconjugated bilirubin we have the normal value of 0 0.0 to 0 0.8 milligrams per deciliter for the direct bilirubin or the conjugated bilirubin, we have the normal values of 0 0.01 to 0 0.3 milligrams per deciliter. And in the total bilirubin, which means the direct and the indirect bilirubin, we have the normal value of 0 0.2 to 1.2 milligrams per deciliter. So this is a normal unpathological case. These are the normal values in a normal healthy average human being. So if the level of the indirect bilirubin was high, that would be a cause for the prehepatic hyperbilirubinemia because those high levels are before the liver is affected. If we have high levels of the direct bilirubin or the conjugated bilirubin, we have a problem after the liver because that liver was already able to conjugate it. So there's no problem in the conjugation process. And if we have an increase in the total bilirubin, which is the direct and the indirect, or if the indirect, direct, and total bilirubin are increased, we have a primary liver pathology because the problem is in the liver, the whole conjugation process. And because this whole conjugation process is affected, we're going to have an increase in all of them. So again, to recap, there are three types of jaundice depending on what's affecting the movement of the bilirubin out of the body. They are the prehepatic causes, where we will have an increase in the indirect bilirubin. We will have the hepatic causes, in which we will have increases in the direct and indirect and the total bilirubin. 
and the post hepatic causes in which we will only have the increase in the direct bilirubin because it's already conjugated so again just to recap we said that bilirubin is formed by the breakdown of red blood cells so what could cause prehepatic jaundice or the prehepatic cause of hyperbilirubinemia this includes many causes uh, just to mention a few transfusion reactions sickle cell anemia thalassemia autoimmune diseases etc so I will be discussing them further but I just wanted to explain because of this picture we can then have hepatic causes so we'll have an increase in both the direct and indirect as well as the total so that could be a primary liver disease which would be hepatitis cancer of the liver liver cirrhosis congenital disorders such as Wilson's disease alpha-1 antitrypsin disease uh, hemochromatosis or specific drugs that could cause the liver to fail uh, some examples antibiotics acetaminophen in large doses or in chronic use can cause uh, hepatic disease we can also have the post hepatic cause in which we will have the increased conjugated or the direct bilirubin because there was no problem from the beginning it's just the process after that's a problem and that could be due to gallstones inflammation scar tissue or tumors that block the flow of the bile into the intestines so what are the prehepatic causes of jaundice so again in those prehepatic causes we will have an increase in the unconjugated or indirect bilirubin so jaundice caused by the prehepatic phase is due to excessive destruction or hemolysis of the red blood cells from various conditions this rapid increase in bilirubin levels in the bloodstream overwhelms the liver's capability to properly metabolize the bilirubin and consequently the levels of unconjugated bilirubin increase conditions which can lead to an increase in the hemolysis of red blood cells include diseases such as malaria sickle cell disease hereditary spherocytosis thalassemia glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency or g6pd drugs or other toxins as well as autoimmune diseases so this is a continuation of the list that i mentioned earlier so now let's talk about hepatic causes for jaundice we mentioned a few briefly in the prior slides so let's talk a bit more in detail about it so in this hepatic or liver cause of jaundice we have again the increase in the conjugated which is the direct bilirubin and the unconjugated or indirect bilirubin and jaundice caused during the hepatic phase can arise from abnormalities in the metabolism and the excretion of the bilirubin this can lead to an increase in both the unconjugated and conjugated bilirubin levels conditions with a hepatic cause of jaundice include acute or chronic hepatitis commonly viral hepatitis a b c d or e or alcohol induced hepatitis we can also have liver cirrhosis which can be caused by chronic hepatitis or alcoholic liver cirrhosis uh, drugs and other toxins i mentioned a few earlier prigler najar syndrome autoimmune disorders and in this case the immune system creates antibodies against the various structures that exist within the liver and causes the liver to fail in this way we also have gilbert syndrome and liver cancer so what are the post hepatic causes of jaundice so again in this situation we will only have an increase in the conjugated or the direct bilirubin jaundice from post hepatic causes arise from the disruption or the obstruction in the normal drainage and excretion of the now conjugated bilirubin in the form of bile from the liver into the intestine this leads to increased levels of conjugated bilirubin in the bloodstream conditions that can cause post hepatic jaundice include gallstones cancer such as pancreatic cancer gallbladder cancer or bile duct cancer strictures of the bile ducts cholangitis which is an inflammation of the biliary system pancreatitis and parasites for example liver flukes so here the primary problem is basically the obstruction in the flow so now that that bilirubin has been conjugated by the liver it wants to be able to easily leave the liver and continue its course but it's unable to do so because we have a blockage and this will cause an increase in conjugated or direct bilirubin 
So that brings us to the end of the presentation. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found the presentation very useful and informative. Please do like, comment, subscribe or share. And if you would like to download a copy of this presentation, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. I'll also be doing a video very soon on the lever function testing. So please do look out for that. And thank you again. See you guys soon. Take care. Bye bye.